Hello and welcome to our sixth episode of the Coromil Plura Insights broadcast on selecting the right spindle speeds for end milling. In the last episode, we explored the right strategy for milling with long overhangs. Today, we will look at the influence of the spindle speed, which is a significant factor for vibration behavior. But for this, we first need to have a look at the theory more intensively. So, one thing we haven't talked about in milling is the vibration. And we know the milling application, by design, it has an interrupted cut. So that means every time your tool engages in the cut and exits, means one vibration, or one hertz. And one easy way to calculate that is your RPM times your number of flute divided by 60. And you can easily see how many hertz do you get. And we call this a tool passing frequency. And now we know also that we have an effect of the tool overhang. So the longer the tool, the greater the deflection of your milling cutter. And this wave you see going to the right, it will affect your chip thickness. Your chip can go to U plus to U minus. And when this happens, and the next flute comes engaging cut, and it doesn't match the same chip thickness, then you are getting a greater vibration because of different forces that apply on your, on your cutter. And you see to the left side, when your chips don't match the same thickness, you're causing this effect of vibration and it amplifies. So your goal is to match the tool passing frequency with the natural state of frequency. We know that every object, and in this case our tool, has a natural state of frequency. So let's talk a little bit more about that. We see here in this example exactly what we said, a long overhang tool, and you see in the picture clearly that when the vibrations occur, your, your vibrations occur in a different place, and that causes you a different chip thickness, different forces, and your vibration constantly amplifies and amplifies. We know this from our experience that once you start getting vibration, it's very hard to control it and get it back to normal. You almost, most every time you have to stop the cutter, and start from the beginning at a very, very slow feed rates in order to clean the surface. So now, let's see how can the spindle speeds can help us here to avoid this effect. Now, let's see how can the spindle speed help us with our vibration. We have here what we call a stability lobe, a spindle stability lobe, and we can calculate that with the piazza sensor. And the way we do that, we try to find the natural state of vibration of our tool. And once we know that, we'll try to align and match the natural state of the frequency with the tool passing frequency. And we see here on this case, on the right side, when you align them one to one, this is your best case and you'll get the best results and the best surface finish. But if this is too high for this example, 8,000 RPM, maybe for your material it will be too high, then you will try to match two to one, two vibration to one. And that is at 4,000 RPM. But we see in between, it's a great, uh, a great length that you will not be on a safe operation. Your depth of cut is limited in this case to 2 millimeters, but at 4,000 you can go up to a 7 millimeters. Now let's put this in practice with our tool. We have here a long overhang of a projection of 6.5 times diameter with a heavy metal shank and an exchangeable head, a carbide exchangeable head. We also analyze the stability law for our tool, and we have here what we say it's a bad RPM and a good RPM. And we see here at 5,000 RPM, or 250 meters, is the not so safe RPM. And at the 6,000, it's the good RPM. Now let's take this on the machine and see how they look like.
As we could see, the bad RPM are 250 meters a minute compared to the 300. We have improved three times more productivity by going up with the spindle speed. And this is well off within our range for the steel material. Of course, if we reduce the RPM slightly, it will also work. But the window of operation would have been smaller. You can get much more deeper depth of cut if you go with the RPM higher. As you have seen, the right choice of spindle speed is extremely important for the operational behavior of the end mill, especially for long overhangs. By setting the correct speed, higher productivity, and above all, a better, safer tool life can be achieved. With this, we hope we gave you interesting insights on end milling with different spindle speeds. If you need more information on this topic, visit our website or contact your Sanvi Cormat representative. Don't miss our next episode where we will take on the maximum removal rate to boost productivity. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, stay productive and avoid vibration with the right spindle speeds.